we, we have muted everyone as standard and hidden videos, but you can unmute yourself and you can uh, turn your video back on again. Uh, we would ask that if uh, people could um, please leave the video off for the presentation, that would be great. Um, and if they do have any questions, please do put them in the chat. Uh, I'm sure if uh, a person is thinking, uh, uh, asking a question, someone else will be thinking the same. So uh, we'll, we'll make a start anyway. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. I hope the next 45 minutes will obviously be very useful for yourselves. And we're going to whiz through um, some of the features and benefits of Microsoft 365. So um, we just move the slide here. A bit of an introduction and a bit overview about the session today. Uh, it, it is being recorded. Um, it Elements of it might be used uh, for publicity to put together uh, 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 trailers, etc., or be shared with other councils. If there's a reason why you wouldn't want this shared, please do let us know. Um, we're going to start with a brief introduction who are cloudy, uh, talk about some of the things we do with councils. Then we're going to sort of straight into it, talking about cloud fundamentals and licensing. Um, Dan, just to confirm, if you could turn everyone's videos off, that would be great, um, but but not necessary. Um, but we're talking about cloud fundamentals and licensing. OK, we'll be talking about um, basically which license is suitable for which uh, officer role. Um, and then talking about the features and the benefits of those licensings. Uh, well, we talk about the evolution of the modern council during COVID. Um, I think we can all agree it's uh, like someone's pressed fast forward over the last uh, um, 12 months, 18 months, and uh, we've all been trying to keep pace with the amount of change that's been happening. So we'll be talking briefly and highlighting some of the trends we're seeing around that. And then we're going to do basically a, a 365 overview uh, talking about um, sort of what good looks like uh, demonstrating uh, how we see councils using 365 and hopefully some of these things you can take away to use for your council as well. Um, we work we will be skimming over 365 applications. Basically, these are applications that are included in Microsoft 365, which are great for productivity. And uh, finally, talking about data security and compliance, um, where we'll be showing you some of the features that you get with 365 that can really help you when trying to run your council. And then finally, we'll move on to uh, talk about our events that are coming up throughout the calendar year. So thanks ever so much. It's going to hit mute on everyone there. So. Um, my name is David Hall. I'm the Managing Director of Cloudy Group, and you're joined by my colleague, Dan Beecher. Uh, he's the Business Development Manager, and he sort of assists myself in uh, working with our councils and ensuring that uh, they've got everything they need. So uh, we're very lucky here at Cloudy to be working with some great partners and have some great uh, accreditations attached to our name. So we work closely with the SLCC. We've put on events with NALC. And uh, we've won a couple of awards around the work we do in the community uh, with a CSR accreditation, silver CSR accreditation as well. But we fundamentally uh, really enjoy working in the sector and we think there's a lot of opportunity for councils to modernise and transform and utilise technology in a really uh, sort of frictionless way that can have benefits for the council, the councillors uh, and everyone involved really. So uh, we, we think there's lots of opportunity through Microsoft 365. So very briefly about Cloudy, we'll move straight on. But we st I started the business um, in uh, well, 20, uh, 2001 uh, out of the basement, my, uh, basement of my parents' pub. Uh, so most good stories start in a pub. Uh, when I started as an internet cafe, the cloud didn't exist. But fast forward all these years and we find ourselves where we are today. Uh, we're very privileged, as I mentioned. We work with about 54 councils now, helping them to transform and uh, utilise 365 uh, to run more efficient councils. So uh, very that's a brief bit about Cloudy, but obviously today the focus is all about Microsoft 365 and yourselves. So um, cloud fundamentals, this is really key um, because uh, here at Cloudy, we, we do we do have the belief that it is important to keep things simple, stupid. Um, IT can be seen as a very complicated thing and it can be made to be complicated if you uh, sort of approach it in that way. Um, and a few uh, simple things prove true, which is uh, the less cloud you have, the better. <laughs> the less sign-ins you have, the less security risks you have, the easier it is to administrate. And Microsoft 365 offers you the single cloud, but pretty much has most of the applications you need to run your council. Now, there are exceptions to the rule, clearly. Uh, it doesn't do accounts. You know, that's why you have the likes of RBS Realtors, et cetera. 
But what it does do is it allows you to run core services in terms of uh, building agenda packs, sharing agenda packs, um, obviously communicating and collaborating between yourselves and with your counsellors. And also it allows you to run services within your council, such as uh, uh, trying to collect data, uh, store data and respond to to your your to the public. So this slide is a really good slide that demonstrates what you get with Microsoft 365. Now what we tend to find with most councils and organizations is that um, they don't realize that they have all of these applications and all of these features in their subscription. So we find that actually they're only using a very small part of of the capability of what they're paying for. So Microsoft 365, as you'd appreciate, includes Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoints. These are applications we use nearly every day. But the other applications that people aren't aware of are things like Planner and Bookings and Forms and Delve. And uh, well, I think we're all aware of Teams. We're using it here today, but Teams is a big component of that. So Microsoft includes all of these other wonderful apps as well as doing just the basics, which we all expect around cloud storage, secure emails. And when you combine this all together, you have a system that is incredibly powerful. Uh, all it needs is a bit of a kind of a, a kind of a bit of a, a bit of a architecture, a bit of a design, and suddenly you've got a really powerful system. So um, I won't be going into all of the apps today. We, we do those on separate sessions and I would be more than happy to do those in a separate session, should that be something that anyone would, would just wish, to, wish to see. Um, so the other interesting part is the, uh, the licenses and we have three main licenses that we see councils using now and I'm just going to talk through them in a bit of detail. So we have the business basic license, which costs £3.80 a month. And this at license is designed for counselors, really, or for staff who do not have devices. OK, so these could be groundskeepers. Yeah, uh, so this license gives them cloud storage. It gives them email, it gives them cloud apps and it gives them teams. So it gives them everything they need to do their jobs. It means they can open a file when you've shared it with them. It means they don't need a device from the council. They can use a personal device, a tablet, a laptop. Um, a PC, a mobile phone, um, and access all the files they need in a secure, simple to use way. The good thing of Microsoft 365 is it really is simple. You have a username and you have a password. And once you sign in with just those two bits of information, you have access to everything you need. Um, so that's really simplistic. So when you are as a clerk or an officer sharing agendas with counselors, you are sharing it in the most simplistic way available and that combined with a bit of training can actually ensure that the councillors can do their job in a very secure way. So the business basic license is designed for councillors or officers who don't need computers or devices. We then have the business standard license, which is the most popular license for officers. Now, this includes everything that business basic has, but it also includes all of the applications. So that includes Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, and these apps are installed on your computer. They're not used in the cloud. OK, so um, that's really important differentiate between the business basic and the business standard is the only difference is that with the business standard, you get the applications installed on your computer and you can actually install those applications on five different computers. So if you had a laptop, a PC, a tablet, you can actually sign in and use those apps as well. OK, so that's really popular, the business standard license, and we see a lot of people using that. And then finally, we have the business premium license, which is a, a, a fairly new license, but actually brings in everything that the previous two did, but also has some security benefits as well. OK, so the business basic and the business standard, they're great licenses, but there's no real security that comes with that. And we're talking two types of security. here: We're talking cloud security and data security, and we're talking device security. And for slightly larger councils that say would have a server, the server can look after that security to a degree. So it can mean that users can't install applications they shouldn't do and they can't uh, find information they shouldn't do. But with the business premium license, it takes over the role of the server. 
OK, so users, they authenticate against the cloud and that locks down their computer. And that means we can put some rules around remote wiping, encryption and ensuring that your data on your computer is secure. Also, some other features that you have available to you are the ability to manage your data in the cloud better. So this is called Azure Information Protection, and I'll show you a bit about that later on. And that allows you to do what's called sensitivity labels. And this allows you to set rules around your data. OK, so when you share the data, say with your counsellors, you can say, um, yeah, a certain document is a sensitive document and they can't print, scan or copy that document. So that's as your information protection. Um, so as you can see, you've got the three different licenses here. They've all got some great uses and some great, great case in terms of how you use them. And we often see a blend of those licenses being used by councils when they're being set up and when they're using them. Um, so some other things to confirm as well. Um, security is built from the ground up with Microsoft 365. So these are really important things, things like multi-factor authentication. Uh, one of the simplest ways to protect your mailbox is, in, is to ensure you have two-step authentication. That is included with it. All of your data is also stored in the UK, so it complies with GDPR uh, uh, law, which is really important as well. And the good thing is with the cloud is you can access your data from anywhere, any location, uh, even in theory, which I sound, it sounds a bit crazy when you're offline as well. So it's very fle flexible, very secure, and it's designed from the ground up to ensure that you can get your data, but also uh, have it protected as well. And we'll show you some examples about how that security works a bit later. So. Um, the evolution of the modern council. Um, we know a lot has happened over the last 12 to 18 months. Uh, we've gone through a huge amount of change. And, um, traditionally, I think it's been seen that local government or the local government uh, sector has been a bit slow to change. And uh, But for many reasons, it's not a difficult thing to change a sector when it is so, uh, so unique, like local government, in terms of the relationship between the councillors, the officers, and also the amount of services that are more recently being pushed onto local government has is increasing all the time. So, um, you know, previously, uh, you know, a, a, a council would be quite small and leave all the services to be delivered by uh, by other organisations. But now they're taking on so many more services for the local public, but they're being asked to do more. And the only way to do that is through technology to have good systems in place. And the great thing is, obviously, with the technology through 365, it can be done in a really cost effective way. So, you know, pre-COVID, you know, we, we're really looking at very slow pace of decision making and communication. And that's not just for council meetings, but also maybe in terms of how um, op how staff operate. You know, agendas will be printed and emailed and um, sometimes that is appropriate for, for some reasons, but equally we are trying to move to a place where it is digital and the councillors have the full confidence to know that they can receive the agenda pack, engage in it and, and not sort of have a, an experience that is negative that would put them off the system, understandably. And then also the effects of this is low productivity and, in a, you know, and then inefficient processes, which basically leads just generally to a system that, you know, all these things pre-COVID that during COVID, what we saw was rapid modernization and adopt, adoption of video conference technology. So obviously we're using Teams here today and uh, Teams was one of them and obviously Zoom was the big one. Uh, and, you know, absolutely Zoom had the head start with Microsoft. They had more viewable windows. Um, it was easier to use, stuff like that. But, you know, Teams now has 49 viewable windows. It's included in your subscription, so it's basically free of charge. Um, you've got some great features there as well. And with a bit of training, you know, it can be made to work. But, um, you know, I think it remote... It, it highlighted the, you know, the challenges around remote working. And what we saw was that as people started to work remotely, uh, they could access their files, but they couldn't access their colleagues quite as, as easily as they would have needed to. And a lot of work went into ensuring that councillors could, you know, go to council meetings remotely. Uh, and, and I think everyone did a fantastic job. 
but equally a lot of the back end operations got left behind in terms of keeping everything on a server in the office etc and now we're starting to see councils look at that and thinking we need to get our back end operations modernized and designed for a world post covid and uh, obviously we start talking about unlocking the opportunities uh, that, the, that the technology will allow you and the attitudes to it as well. I think that's what's changed as well, the attitudes to technology. We're all embracing it a bit more now and it is working. So what do we see happening now? We see hybrid meetings. Uh, we see involving officers, the public, councillors. Now I realise obviously councillors can't be part of, of meetings legally but we'll see what happens with that one. Uh, I was talking to NAUC yesterday and we all agree that you know and they've, they've championed extremely hard to uh, for hybrid meetings to continue um, uh, and I, I think we all agreed that the genie is out the bottle now and you know councils want the flexibility to be able to meet remotely and have offices who can't make meetings or for some personal reason can't attend but would love to still join in. Um, but what we can do in terms of where we are working, what is legally allowed to do, uh, there are some benefits to upgrading your council chamber for two-way audio. You've got the ability to uh, for officers to join remotely so that they don't necessarily have to stay for a whole meeting, they can still engage in the in the council meeting. We have the ability for uh, the public to in, in be involved as well clearly, which I think was a huge win during COVID and uh, I think across the board all councils have seen engagement from the community improve incredibly, which is I think uh, we can all agree is a great thing. Um, but you can also have suppliers, vendors, um, you know, people who need to be at the meeting that can't make it, you know, that could be a, a county council official or someone like that. They can join the meeting. So being prepared and we, we see hybrid meetings being a big thing, regardless of the law change or not. And we see, as I mentioned, increased engagement across the board through uh, the, the new technology. And we're seeing rapid investment in technology, but also most importantly, training because the thing is all this technology is great but we do need a bit of a steer um, you know some of it is intuitive some of it you click a button it all makes sense others you do need someone to sort of give you a quick got bit of guidance on how to use it and what to do but the good thing is the technology has improved greatly and compared to where it was just 12 months ago it is a lot easier to use and I think people are more comfortable using it as well because of what's happened so that's what we see happening over uh, the, the next 12 months and certainly in terms of looking to the future what next uh, hybrid meetings will be a thing remote working flexible working um, obviously I think people like to be in the office but they like the flexibility should they need it so, um, this is where I come off the slide deck you'll be glad to hear so it's not sort of uh, death by PowerPoint and uh, I'll be just basically going through office 365 where to find your apps um, some basic use cases of how you would use OneDrive, SharePoint and Microsoft Teams to access your files um, and the relationship between the applications. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick glug of my tea. There we go. So um, just as I mentioned, if anyone does have any questions, please do put them in the chat. And we'll try and answer them later on during the Q&A as well. So. Um, uh, minimizes. Okay, so we have here um, my browser, Google, it's uh, Edge Chromium, and uh, I'm signed into office.com and I've signed in as clark at cloudycouncil.co.uk. So when I sign in there, I can see all of my apps. OK, and I have the business premium license, which means I have all the apps I've showed you earlier. Now, um, these apps I can use in the cloud, so I can click on Word, Excel, Teams, OneDrive. So this is essentially what a counselor would see. You know, as a counselor, you go to office.com, you then go to Outlook and you can get your emails. It's pretty simple. And that is uh, reflected, obviously, in the Outlook app if you have that installed as well. So. This is how you access the uh, 365 in the browser. Now, I'm going to talk about OneDrive and SharePoint. So we find a lot of organizations use 365, but they don't use SharePoint. They might use Dropbox or they might use Google Drive or they might just store stuff on their PCs. So these are where you store your data. 
and it stores your data really well. Uh, a couple of years ago, I must admit it wasn't the best and it wasn't something that we'd recommend, but it is a superb product now. So OneDrive is designed for personal stuff. It's like what you'd put in your my documents. So if I go to my OneDrive now, you can see here I've got all of these different folders. I've got downloads, um, documents, desktop. These are all actually what is on my computer. We sync your OneDrive to your computer. OK, so as you're working on your computer, saving your files, it's actually syncing it to the Internet and actually backing up your computer, which is really nice. So if your computer ever breaks, you can just sign into your OneDrive, go to your documents and there's all of your personal stuff there, which is really useful. OK, so OneDrive is for personal stuff. Now, what you can do from your OneDrive is you can share stuff if you need. And I'll show you a bit later how that works. If I go back up here, if I go to SharePoint, this is what you use to store council data. OK, not personal data, but council data. I'll describe this like a mapped drive on your server. They call them SharePoint libraries. So I, when I click on SharePoint, we get like a home page here. We can customize this however you wish. Um, but what we've got set up is we've got a number of different SharePoint libraries and we've got one called operations, which is the main council library where all the offices have access, not the councillors. And then we have all our committees, full council, finance, planning, and uh, that's where the councillors have access to. And they can share files and they can access files that have been put there and they can review them. So I'm just going to focus on operations to start with. So if I click on operations here, you can see we've customised this view. Very simple, takes a couple of minutes. And so you can customise the view for you and your council. So what we've got here is we've got a, a quick snippet of the calendar so we can see what's going on. We have all the files down the right hand side and then we have all the files that have recently been opened. OK, so you can see that your colleague, my colleague here, Steve Jobs, opened that file 17 days ago. Cool. And I could click on that file if I wanted to and it would open it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to documents there. So right now I'm working in the cloud. OK, so nothing's touching my computer and I'm quite comfortable working in the cloud. I've been doing it for a little while. It works well. The good thing with Microsoft is you don't just have to work in the cloud. You can work in the cloud. You can work on your computer or in Teams and still get to the same files really easily. And I'll show you later on how that works. So I'm in operations, I'm in documents and you can see all of my folders here. Now, these folders are the folders I use to run the council. So an example would be committee meetings. So we've got committee meetings and then we have all the different committees. I have finance. 2018 January and we have the agenda pack for January with all the supporting papers. Now if I go to January agenda I can click on that document and it just opens it in the browser. There we go. So now I'm still in the browser and I'm editing this file in the browser. Now the good thing is actually the browser works really well um, for the vast majority of things you need to do it will be fine um, so this is what a counselor would use essentially uh, or even an officer um, so you know uh, from here you can do some pretty cool things you can co-author documents i can see now that steve jobs is also in this document because it says sj at the top so steve jobs is working on this file god bless his soul um, and I can, you know, we can co-author this document together, but where it gets quite cool is we can do some really cool things as well, such I can highlight a bit of a document and I can say, um, I want to put a new comment on that. And I could say, you know, at Steve, could you, and I can even assign it to Steve's job list as well. There we go. So this might be quite useful when you're doing a policy review. You know, um, so uh, long, long document, you share the document with the people who need to access it and then you can uh, basically start adding comments. So some of you might know this already possible. So apologies if, if I'm sort of showing you something you already know, but sometimes it's always good to show these things. And you can see Steve here has tagged back and gone. Yes, looks great. Ready to go. So I can just basically tick it off and that's gone. It's done. So. Um, you know, all this stuff is really useful because when we're not in the same office, we can't sort of tap our colleague on the shoulder or shout him over the desk and we're all working remotely. And this is just one aspect of that. So you've got the ability to, you know, obviously interact with your data. And if I, if someone was to change this document, when I log back into it, it would show me all the changes on the side. Also, we have some cool features around dictation. 
So if I was to go here and some so if I give this a go, hit dictate and allow, I can dictate to it. And uh, oh, let's have a look. Let's give it another go. Uh, dictate. Hello, this is a test to see if it's working. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, so you know, this could be a useful feature for the councillors to use or someone who's just not confident typing that much. You can talk and it types it for you. So that's really useful. I'm going to stop doing that now. There we go. So yeah, so the dictation feature is really useful. Um, and, uh, you know, for someone who, who isn't confident, typing can be really uh, handy. So other features you have got as well within here, you've got the ability um, to obviously, uh, I mentioned earlier about protecting data, sensitivity labels. We have sensitivity here. I can say if this document is a public document, a council document or a confidential document. OK, and once I apply that tag, that confidential, it says here uh, under confidential, it's a confidential document um, that people cannot edit, view or so. So if I tag that as confidential, it's already I'm editing someone else is editing it. Um, it will then tag that document and apply those rules to that document. So what you might find is in your agenda pack, you have a couple of documents in there that um, you know, relate to some sort of uh, HR or some sort of finance uh, subject, and you can tag them with a sensitivity label, which means that they'll be removed and they'll be protected once you've shared that agenda pack as well. Okay, so you have got some other features as well. So I'm working in the cloud right now but i might be like oh, actually you know what i need to work on on the app because i need some more features that's fine just click on open in desktop app and then it will open it up on my computer so there we go and as you can see sensitivity labels there dictates there there's a couple of other buttons as well and there's some great features once you're in there as well in terms of how you manage your document if when you're looking at say accessibility for instance you have the ability uh, to make a document accessible uh, we've covered this before in our accessibility summit um, which we'll be more than happy to share the um, information with but you can make documents accessible as well through here uh, two ways to do it one through word or the other one through a Adobe for the Adobe plugin as well. So um, I'm just going to close that Word document down and there we go, we're back, back working in the browser again. So some great features as well around the browser is the ability to share. So rather than attaching documents, you can share documents with people. So if I wanted to share this agenda with someone, I'd hit share. And then I have all these different rules about how I can share it. So I can share it with anyone. I can share it with only people in the council or I can share it if it is a very secure document with specific people. Now, if I do it with a specific person, it could be anyone. It could be someone with a Gmail email address. It verifies who they are. OK, so you'd, you'd, you'd hit share with specific. You'd hit apply. You'd then type in their name and they'd receive an email to say, David wants to share this document. Could you verify who you are? You know, you're going to receive a pin number. You put the pin number in and then you can open the file. OK, so if I was to go to say with anyone, I can change the, the rules around this. I can say I want to share with anyone, but I don't want them to edit it and I don't want them to download it. They can just literally see it and that's it. And that could be saying maybe quite good to you know share your agendas online. So you basically go to uh, un uh, untick allow, hit the block, download, apply, and you can copy that link. So we hit copy link copy and now you could put that on your website so if i went back to say um oh, let me just go in here into outlook if i co copied and pasted this url into outlook you can see how it formats it actually formats it quite nice um, so if i go control v it will then change it got january agenda that's pretty pretty isn't it so it looks pretty good another great feature of chrome um not chrome sorry uh, edge from microsoft is actually what it will do is it will format your um uh, if I do this now, Cloudy Council. Time now. So if you have a browser, um, it will format a URL um, in a document. So um, come on. Gotcha. There we go. So if I copy and paste that URL there and put it into an email, can you see that? Rather than putting www, it actually puts the name. 
which is quite nice. You don't get an edge um, in Chrome. You only get that in Edge. OK, so um, so and it just looks pretty. It's just nicer. So um, back to what I was talking about anyway. So in terms of sharing stuff, so you can share the agenda by the URL. You can put all sorts of rules on how you share stuff. So I go back to share. I go back here. You can say um, I want to share in review mode only. Now, when you share in review mode, it means that people can't break the document, but only offer suggestions to that document. Um, so when you share it in that mode, that's all they can do. And then also you can put an expiry date, set a password, et cetera, et cetera. So let's pretend I'm going to share this with the councillors. So I go to people at Cloudy Council. I untick allow editing because I don't want them to edit it. I don't mind them downloading it. It's fine. But maybe I don't want them to download it. There you are. I tick that button as well. So I hit apply. I then type in, say, full council. Um, so, uh, there we go. And send. So, so I've just shared the agenda pack with the councillors, and it's that easy. And then you can put the sensitivity labels on any sensitive files that are inside those documents as well. So uh, and just very quickly show you review mode, which is quite nice. If I go editing, I can actually put it into review mode here. I can manually do that. So when I do that, I put it into review mode. If I was to delete that, it puts a line for it. OK, and the person who is actually the, the editor can accept or to um, reject the changes, so I'm not going to I'm going to reject that. OK, so um, that's some basic stuff around um, some features that might be useful uh, around it. Now, if I go back a level and go up to agenda, I'm in operations, Jan, if I go back on Jan here, I've gone back to the SharePoint library. I'm in committee meetings, finance. I can share the whole folder, so I could just go to January, share. People at Cloudy Council don't allow editing apply full council okay so i can you know share the whole folder not just the file and this sharing is everywhere so whether you're in your onedrive whether you're in sharepoint you can share stuff to the people that need it which is nice so um, as I mentioned, um, some people aren't comfortable working in the browser, which is fine. It's not a problem if you're not comfortable. You know, uh, you can still do your job. It's not an issue. So if I was to go to, say, um, uh, documents here, which is under operations, you've got obviously apps, committee meetings, events, facilities. Now, if I go to my computer. You can see uh, my OneDrive here, OK, and I've got Cloudy Council and OneDrive. OK, so Cloudy Council is where or under operations, I have the same folder structure. I've got apps, committee meetings, events, apps, committee meetings, events. So whether I'm working here or there, the information's always in sync. OK, and as I mentioned earlier, your OneDrive is where your personal stuff sits is down here. So I can go to, say, my documents and here's all my files. And you can see here at the moment it's got a, a cloud next to it. That means that it's actually in the cloud. It's not even on my computer. It's just making me think it's on my computer because that makes me feel comfortable. Now, if I was to open that monthly meeting notes, it will download it and turn it to a tick, which means it is on my computer. OK, and that will open it up. There we go. And you can see that's a council document. It says cloudy council on the other side there. Now, this is a good thing because a bit like Dropbox, as you're working away, it will sync all your files. And it might be that, you know, you're going to go into a meeting and you need those files on your computer. Uh, um, so what you do is let's say go to operations, committee meetings, finance 2018, January. What I can do is actually they're on my computer already because I've used them, but let's just remove them. So what I can do here is um, free up space and it's going to put them back in the cloud. There we go. So they're back in the cloud. Now, what I can say is actually I always need these files. So I right click and say always keep on my device. And it puts them into this tick here, which means they'll always keep those files on my computer. OK, now it gets pretty good as well, because other things you can do is you can say, um, OK, so I want a particular folder uh, synced. So if I go to say full council, there's the sync button here. You click the sync button. It will then sync it to the computer, OK, which means. So and that's already available, it will put it in just here, OK, so it means you can always keep your information in sync, which is what you want. So the third bit, which kind of catches people out um, is 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 Microsoft Teams. 
and how does that interact with your data? OK, so what I've showed you here is I've showed you SharePoint, where your data sits. I've showed you the File Explorer, where you can get your data and you can still share from here. If I right click share. I can still share. I think sometimes there are a couple of settings missing, maybe something to be aware of, but you can still fundamentally do what you need to do there. Um, but we've got SharePoint, your computer. So what does Teams do? Well, this is where it gets interesting because Teams is basically uh, another layer of communication. Now, how we've described Teams, we're all aware that we've, you know, Teams does video conferencing like we're using it today, but Teams actually does a lot more. OK, it's designed for document uh, access, communication, collaboration. So actually Teams does, you know, what we're doing here is about a third of what Teams is capable of. So if I go to Teams now and show you, this is our Teams. Oh, apologies. Um, OK, so um, this is quite interesting because uh, we're in actually a, a CSR business award uh, for Buckinghamshire. And I think they've just knocked on the front door. So uh, I'll continue this session though. But they've, they've announced the winner because of COVID. You don't do it. You don't do it anymore in person. And they're sending a video crew to to announce the winner. I think so. Uh, I'll keep I'll keep talking anyway. Um, so this is Teams, and Teams is an extension of everything we saw a minute ago. Okay. So what you can do in Teams here is you have teams. You have groups of people, and I'll I'll talk through some of the features of Teams. If I go to Teams here, you can see the teams that we've set up and there's one called Operations. Operations is the SharePoint library. It's the same thing. And if I click on Operations, you can see this thing's called Channels. And what channels are, are channels are places where you can have communications and access files as well. OK, so we've got here committee meetings, committee meetings, committee meetings. So if I click on committee meetings, we can have conversations about the committee meetings with my colleagues. So with smaller councils, you know, just a clerk and a deputy clerk, maybe not as big a thing. But when you've got groups of people all working together, this becomes quite powerful. So if I go here and I go to files, you can see what you saw earlier, finance, full council, operations. If I go to finance, 2018, January, you can see January agenda and I can open that up in Teams. And it's going to open up the January agenda, the same file I was just working on a second ago in SharePoint and on my computer. And from here, you can use it like Word. You can open it in Word as well, open in desktop app, um, but also you can have conversations. And this is what Teams is about. It's about communicating and collaborating. So if I hit conversation, I can then say at Steve could you look at this or i could add the whole team operations come on what's going on with this okay so we're having conversations now so what will happen is if steve replies to that i can see steve's reply to that or thumbs it up which is quite nice so i'll just see if steve does that um He might not because he might be distracted for the fact that uh, some people have just come into our office. So, OK, there we go. He's thumbs up. So so Steve can communicate with me and say, yeah, looks good. Or, and he can even reply as well. So, uh, Steve, if you want to reply, that would be great. <laughs> there we go. Thanks. And I can thumbs up and back as well. So cool. We can have a conversation about a file. Now, if I close that down and I close this down and I go to, say, posts, you can see that conversation on the posts. Yeah, um, what's going on with this? It will be sent out this afternoon. So that means people who aren't part of the conversation but are part of the team can see what's happening and they can even open up the file and have a look themselves, which is cool, see the conversation or not bother at all. So that's what Teams does. And this is one aspect of Teams. It allows you to get to files. Other things you can do is meet. You can meet your entire team by hitting meet now. You can schedule a meeting with your team by hitting schedule a meeting. It will schedule a meeting with everyone in the operations team. So there's a lot there it can do. I'm just going to flick through the settings of Teams now, but this session isn't talk about Teams. I'm conscious we've got about five minutes left as well. So we have here the uh, activity, which keeps you uh, notified of all the times you've been tagged in stuff. And just to confirm what Teams tries to 
Times tries to do is it, it tries to reduce the amount of email traffic because you're using it a bit like WhatsApp, you know? So Teams is a WhatsApp replacement, okay? So if I go to chat, you can see here all the conversations I'm having with my colleagues, Steve Jobs, we've got a plan in chat. Now, the good thing is if, um, you know, you decide to remove WhatsApp and Messenger and use Teams across the board, then it means that you're having secure communication that can be part of your GDPR policy. That means that if anyone uh, sh should request some information, you can search all that information and it's there. It protects the counsellor, the officer and everyone else involved as well. So Teams is a WhatsApp style replacement and you can have you know, video calls, audio calls, share your screen, invite people to calls. It works on a mobile phone. It works really well. OK. Um, Obviously, you have the teams here. So this is the operations team, but we also have, say, full council and they've got access to different channels. OK, for, for different reasons. Um, I'm not going to go into it, all these today in depth because that's for another session if, 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 if you wish. So but there are other features. Teams also is a phone system. OK, so if I click on calls, you can see here I can dial a number and I can receive a call as well. So suddenly you have one app that does it all, which is really good and it's really cost effective as well. So it's a good app. Um, I'm, I'm starting to move into the next stage here. So I'm, I'm going to stop at this point. Um, but Teams does do a lot. Um, and if you ever want to see that, we can do another event as well. So um, I think I've covered mainly the things I wanted to cover around 365, uh, accessing files, OneDrive, SharePoint and Teams. Uh, and we're probably best to go into the next part, which is the um, the apps. OK, so as I mentioned, there's lots of apps that come with Microsoft 365. It's a really good platform and these apps can be really useful in the in the council. Now, uh, we don't have time to go through all these today, unfortunately. Um, but I, I, as I mentioned, I would be happy to do an event or do a session with anyone who wanted to see these apps. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain some of the features of them. So you've got bookings that allows you to basically manage your bookings. So you can automate, take payments, and you can manage bookings um, for services or events that you have on. You have Microsoft Forms, which can collect data. OK, so it's a survey. You can turn them into QR codes, stuff like that. Uh, Planner, which is a great way to plan projects, as its name suggests. A bit like Trello, Asana. You know, these are really good tools that would cost you money. And also they are great tools, but Microsoft give it to you for free and it's fully integrated into 365. Um, once again, I can't show you, but it, it works really well. Um, lists is a great way to store information. That could be counselor information. That could be assets. You can store it in a list and view it and interact on that really nicely. Uh, we have Delve, which is a way to basically find data really quickly. Shifts, which allows you to manage shifts and rotors. It's built into 365. It works really well. It's free. Uh, and then we have Business Voice, which allows you to obviously use Teams like a telephone system as well. So really good. Um, right. So a bit around data security and compliance. Um, we held a, an event at the end of last year around this a summit where we talked about it, had our experts come and talk about it. But 365 is a great product and with business premium, you get some great tools to protect your data. Um, and uh, that's around all the things I talk about here about data resilience, encryption, information protection, backups, version history, um, advanced monitoring and reporting. Uh, the cloud is brilliant, but obviously when someone gets into your cloud, you can have problems. Um, they say that when someone's been hacked, they don't often know for many months, and by then it's too late. With these systems put in place, you know within minutes if something's happened. And if it has, you can stop it. You can build a report of what happened and obviously take measures to protect yourself. So I'm just going to show you an example of how that actually looks. Um, so what I've got here is um, the Security and Compliance Center. OK, and we have something called e-discovery. OK, so when you set up an e-discovery, uh, you might have a member of the public go, um, I want you to present a report with all the information held on me, please. So that's fine. You can open a new case and hit open, create a new search or a new guided search or a new ID. Here's one I made earlier, so to speak. If I click on that and go to view results. What I might do actually is do a new one just to show you. It's bringing up the search. I, I search for the word test. 
and it came up 15 times in 12 mailboxes. Um, so, and you can rerun that or present a report, export results, export report, you see? And you can go to, let's say, a new search here. And you can type in a keyword like, I don't know, agenda. And I could say search everywhere, all locations, save and run. And that's going to, there we go. And that's going to search the entire system, all your documents, all your mailboxes, all your conversations, and present a report for you. Okay. So um, I'm conscious I want to answer any questions that anyone has. Um, so I'm not going to spend too long on this, but there's lots we can do around it. And it's a really good system, as I'm hopefully demonstrating now. Um, so we're at the end of the session today. We wanted to keep it quite short, um, just really highlighting some of the great things, use cases for licenses, etc. We're really busy here at Cloudy, organising lots of events to hopefully just try and provide some information to the councils we work with. Um, so we have an event coming up at the end of June, our Cloud Productivity and Finance Summit. Uh, we have RBS Realtors also attending on that summit, as well as some of our clerks who will be talking about their experiences of some of the things you've seen today. We also have some other events around broadcasting your council meetings and what equipment to use. We also have another meeting about uh, building the modern agenda pack and sharing it with your councillors. And we also have web accessibility as well. We'll be talking about web accessibility. Um, and finally, we have a social responsibility summit, a CSR summit, which is really important to us here at Cloudy. Um, and that's being hosted in October. So um, that is it. Uh, thanks ever so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope it's been a really useful session for you and you've got what you expected. Um, does anyone have any questions they want to ask? I think Dan will be putting a feedback form in the in the chat um, as well as sending out afterwards. So any feedback will be greatly appreciated. Um, but if anyone has any questions, the floor is yours. OK, I don't know if it's just someone just people are trying to unmute themselves or not, or I've just done a really good job and everyone's covered what, what they need to hear. Um, but um, OK, well, brilliant. Well, if there's no questions, not a problem at all. Um, uh, I really appreciate you obviously coming to join us here today. And uh, should you have want any questions subsequently after this uh, session, please do get in touch with me or Dan. We'd be more than happy to uh, answer those questions you'd have. Um, but obviously, we're really happy because we've just won a CSR award for Buckinghamshire, which is great. And I can see the people out the front there, which is great. So we're really excited. But have a wonderful um bank holiday uh please look after yourself stay safe and um yeah oh can you do more in-depth training teams yeah absolutely yeah we, we we would love to do more training on teams we here at cloudy we actually have a, a training portal we've set up to provide all information free of charge to our customers so um brilliant well thanks very much lovely to see you all uh thank you for your time and do take care goodbye thanks very much cheers bye